Hey, it's Yay for Yarn, and today I'm going to show you how to knit the afternoon stroll cowl. So this cowl is done in a very pretty, delicate um, lace pattern, but it's actually a very simple stitch pattern to work. And even if you've never really done um, lace stitch patterns before, I'm going to break this down and simplify it for you so that it makes sense and it's really not that hard to do. So the first thing you're going to need for this project is the free written pattern, which is available on my blog. So you can go ahead and click the link in the description box below and you will be taken to the free pattern on my blog. Or you can also purchase a large print ad-free printable PDF version of the pattern in my Ravelry store. So for this cowl, you're going to need obviously some yarn. This is Lion Brand Touch of Alpaca. And this is a number four worsted weight yarn. And this is a three and a half ounce or 100 gram skein. More importantly, you know, it's 207 yards. So this is a one skein project. This is the one skein I'm going to be using for this cowl. And then you're also going to need a circular knitting needle. And this one is a size seven or four and a half millimeter circular knitting needle. And it is about 24 inches long. You can do a shorter circular needle than that, but don't really go any longer. So since it calls for a 24 inch circular needle, if you have a 30 inch circular needle, it won't work because it will be too long for the stitches that are sitting on it. You're also going to need some scissors, a yarn needle or blunt tapestry needle for weaving in your ends and etc., a measuring tape or a ruler to check your gauge, and you'll also need a stitch marker. Now this is an O-shaped or a ring type stitch marker. And this is not a stitch marker that we attach to the knitted stitches themselves. This is a stitch marker that we put on the needle. So make sure that whatever um, your stitch marker is, as long as it's big enough to slip onto the needle, because there are some kinds of stitch markers that clip, and some of them have very small clips where they're only supposed to clip to a stitch. You're gonna need one that can slide on and off of your needle because we're going to be slipping the marker at the end of every round. So that will help us to know where the beginning and end of the round is. So here is the stitch pattern that we're going to be using and the gauge for this pattern to be um, the right size for the cowl is you're going to need to be getting 18 stitches to four inches and approximately 25 rows to four inches in the stitch pattern that we're gonna be using for this. All right, so I've got my needle here, my circular needle and my yarn, and we're going to start by casting on, and I'm gonna be using a long tail cast on. That's just my preference um, because it is something that most knitters know how to do. It's, it's very commonly taught to beginners. So I'm going to go ahead and use a long tail cast on for this project, and I'm going to cast on 105 stitches. So what we're going to do is I've got my slip knot on the needle. If you haven't done a long tail cast on before, um, I've got my yarn in what they call the slingshot position, like so. So the yarn from the skein is going through my fingers over the top of my index finger, and then it comes down to the slip knot, and then the yarn that is the tail, and I've left a pretty long tail, but the yarn that is the tail is going over and around my thumb and then back down here and held in the rest of my fingers. So I'm holding my thumb and my forefinger out to kind of separate those two strands of yarn. So for each stitch that I'm going to cast on, um, the slip knot counts as the first stitch. And to cast on another stitch, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to pick up with my right needle the strand of yarn that's on the front of my thumb come back here and grab the yarn that's coming off my index finger and pull it underneath the strand from my thumb. Then I'm going to take my thumb out of that loop and then pick it back up again to tighten that little um, loop that goes around that stitch. Now you don't want to pull it tight tight, but just so that it's not, you know, saggy and floppy. So that is just a brief um, review of the long tail cast on. If you're not familiar with the long tail cast on, 
um, then you, you can use another cast on if you like, or you can, um, learn to do the long shell cast on. It's a pretty, it's a pretty commonly used cast on in knitting patterns. So I'm going to cast on a total of 105 stitches loosely, meaning I'm not going to do it super tight because I don't want to inhibit the stretch of my edge here. All right. So now I've got 105 stitches and I'm going to go ahead and double check, recount my cast on stitches to make sure I actually have 105 because you don't want to miscount. Now, if you've got the wrong number of stitches, then by the time you realize it later, you'll have to rip it back and start over again. So you want to double check and go ahead and count your cast on stitches before you start knitting to make sure you have the correct amount. All right, so I have the correct number of stitches, and now we're going to join to work in the round. So this is now my right needle. It has the yarn coming off of it. And I'm going to kind of spread the stitches around the length of the cable on my circular needle. And you want to make sure, before you join to work in the round, you want to make sure that you see that cast on edge running around the inside of that circle there because you do not want your cast on edge to get twisted or else the project will be twisted and this is not the same as if you were to um you know have a cowl with a twist in it it would just be like a wonky type of twist so you don't want to accidentally have your cast on stitches twisted so i'm going to leave the tail yarn out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and kind of roll it up here so that it's just not hanging so long. And I will trim it later when I go to weave it in. So here is the yarn that's coming from the skein. So before we start knitting in the round, I'm going to take this little stitch marker and I'm going to slide it onto my left needle. So every time we come to that stitch marker, we'll know that that's the end of the round and we will just slip that stitch marker across so that we'll always know where the end of the round is. So this cowl starts with a garter stitch border. So normally when we're knitting garter stitch back and forth in rows, garter stitch is made by knitting every row. But because we're working in the round now, we make our garter stitch by knitting one row and then purling the next row. That may not make a whole lot of sense, but just trust me on this one. When you're knitting in the round, you're always working from the right side of the work. So instead of knitting wrong side rows on, you know, in garter stitch, we're going to purl every other right side row to make garter stitch in the round because we're always working from the same side of the fabric. All right, so for the first round of our cowl, we're just going to knit all the way around. Every single stitch is just knit like normal. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit the first stitch and kind of pull on it a little tighter because I don't want a gap in between where I started and where um, where the end of the cast on was. And of course there will be a tiny little gap in the edge, but that is something we fix with our cast on tail. So I'm gonna go ahead and knit all the way around and I will stop when I get back to the stitch marker. All right, so I am back around to the stitch marker and what I want to do is I want to slide that stitch marker from the left needle across to the right needle. So now we know that we've made it to the end of the round. We've slipped our marker. And every time that you knit in the round, once you finish that first round, you want to go back and check again to make sure that your round is not twisted. Because even after that first round, it can still accidentally get twisted. And you want to check and make sure that it's not before you work on the second round. So for the second round, I'm going to purl every stitch all the way around. All right, so I am back around to the marker and I'm gonna slip the marker. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to repeat rows one and two one more time. That's gonna be rows three and four is a repeat of rows one and two. So I'm gonna knit one more entire round and then purl one more entire round and that's going to make our garter stitch edging. All right, so that is the end of round four and I am slipping my marker. 
So now we're going to move on to the lace part of the cowl. And if you've never knit lace before, what makes lace knitting different from regular knitting is that we are creating little holes or eyelets in specific places in the fabric. And so we need a couple extra stitches that you may or may not be used to yet if you've never knit lace, but they're not hard stitches to work at all. So first of all, to make the little holes, we need something called a yarn over and the yarn over adds a stitch, it increases a stitch. So when we work that yarn over, that creates another stitch in our round. And since we're not making this to get wider and wider and wider, we just want it to be straight. Every time we work one of those yarn overs, we have to compensate for that by decreasing a stitch or removing a stitch to compensate for the fact that we added a stitch with the yarn over. So then we always, you know, consistently always have the correct number of stitches at the end of the round because we're not increasing stitches to make this wider. We just want it to be straight, but the yarn overs and the decreases are for creating the stitch pattern and not for shaping. So we're gonna start by working round five and there's a little sequence that we're gonna be repeating all the way around. So first in the sequence is to knit one and then we're going to do something called a knit two together and this is a decrease and it just means that instead of inserting our right needle into the first stitch on the left needle as if to knit, we're going to insert our right needle into the first two stitches on the left needle as if to knit. So I've just inserted my needle into two stitches at the same time and I'm going to knit through them like so. And then we're going to do the yarn over. So a yarn over is just a way of wrapping the yarn around the needle. So if you're knitting English style, you're going to just have the yarn in your right hand and you will just bring the yarn forward in front of um, or to the front of the work in between the needles. And then the next time you knit a stitch, then the yarn will come back behind and it will create the yarn over which is supposed to look kind of like that. But since I knit continental style, I just make my yarn overs by bringing the right needle behind the working yarn and over to the side a little bit. So basically you just want the yarn to start at the front of your needle and go over the top of the needle to the back. So that's our yarn over. Then I'm gonna knit one stitch, yarn over again by bringing the right needle behind the working yarn. And then we're gonna do another kind of decrease, okay? So the knit two together that we just did over here slants to the right. We need a decrease now that slants to the left. So what we're gonna do is something called a slip one, knit one, PSSO, and this is not as complicated as it sounds. So first we're gonna slip one stitch, and that just means we're gonna insert our right needle into that stitch as if to knit and slide it off of the left needle. So we're not actually working through the stitch, we're just moving it from this needle to this needle. Now, I will say that there are other ways to slip a stitch. You can slip a stitch as if to purl, but in this case, we wanna slip it as if to knit. So there's our slip one. Then we're gonna knit a stitch. And then the PSSO means pass the slipped stitch over. So that means I'm gonna take my left needle and here's the stitch we just knit and here's the stitch that we slip, which is right before the stitch that we just knit. So I'm gonna insert my left needle into that slipped stitch and I'm gonna lift it up and bring it over the top of the stitch we just knit and over the tip of the right needle and then let it fall off of the left needle tip. So that creates another decrease that slants to the left. And then I'm gonna knit one more stitch. So that is our little sequence. So let me show you again. We're gonna knit one. We're gonna knit two together by inserting the right needle through two stitches at once and knitting them together as though they were one. We're gonna yarn over, knit one, yarn over, then we're gonna slip one as if to knit by inserting it into the stitch as if to knit and just sliding it off the left needle. Knit a stitch and then pass the slip stitch over. Again, I'm gonna bring my left needle over here to that stitch that we slipped and lift it up over 
the stitch we just knit and over the tip of the needle as if we were binding that stitch off and then knit one. So knit one, knit two together, yarn over, knit one, yarn over, slip one, knit one, PSSO, and then knit one. And that's our little sequence we're gonna repeat all the way around. So I'm gonna keep repeating that all the way around till I get back to the marker. All right, so I'm back to the marker and I'm gonna slip my marker. So that was round five, and now we're gonna work round six. And for round six, we're just gonna knit every stitch all the way around until we get back to the marker. And I do wanna show you what it looks like to knit into a yarn over, because here's what a yarn over looks like when you come to it. And it's not really any different than any other stitch. We're just going to insert the right needle under that strand as if to knit, just like any other stitch, and knit through it as normal. All right, so that's the end of round six. I'm gonna slip my marker. And now we're gonna work round seven. And round seven isn't any harder than round five. Uh, we're just, we're using all of the same basic stitches. We're just using them in a different order. So the little sequence that we're gonna repeat for round seven, um, for that we're gonna start by knitting two together. Then we're going to yarn over. We're gonna knit three yarn over again, and then we're gonna do our slip one, knit one, PSSO, or pass the slip stitch over. That's our little sequence that we're gonna be repeating. So I'll show you that little sequence again. We're gonna start by knitting two together, by inserting the right needle into two stitches at once and knitting through them as though they were one stitch. Then we're going to yarn over, we're gonna knit three, yarn over, then we're gonna slip one as if to knit, knit one stitch, and then pass the slip stitch over by lifting that slip stitch up and over the knit stitch after it and over the tip of the needle. So one more time, knit two together, yarn over, knit three, yarn over, slip one, knit one, PSSO. So I'm gonna keep repeating that little sequence all the way around till I get back to the marker. All right, so I'm back to the marker and I'm gonna slip my marker. And now we're just going to work round eight, which is just like round six. We're gonna knit every single stitch all the way around till we get back to the marker. All right, so I'm back to the marker and I'll slip the marker. So you can kind of see the beginnings of that lace pattern coming out right there. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna keep repeating rounds five to eight, basically another 19 times for a total of 20 times, and it should measure about 10 inches from the cast on edge by the time you have repeated them that many times. And I would highly recommend if you have the printable version, I would recommend you print it out and use like a sticky note to keep track of where you're at in the pattern in case you need to lay it down and then you can just stick the, um, the sticky note right under the round you're on, and every time you finish a round, move it down so that it shows the next round. So then you'll always know where you're at in the pattern in case you have to set it down and pick it back up later. So like I said, we're going to repeat rows five to eight another 19 times, and our piece should measure about 10 inches from the cast on edge at that point. So I'm going to keep repeating rows five to eight, like I said. Now, if you were still down here at the garter stitch border, regardless, you're still gonna keep repeating the same four rows, rows five to eight, until the cowl is the height that we need it to be. And then we will work another little garter stitch border on the top. All right, so I have finished repeating rows five to eight. And after I worked them the first time, I repeated them 19 times more. So in total, from where we stopped this little garter stitch edging to where we're at right now, we've worked rows five to eight a total of 20 times. So we repeat it 19 times after we've done it the first time. So now your piece should measure about 10 inches from the cast on edge. And now we're going to work another garter stitch edging up here to match the one at the bottom. So I've already slipped my marker and we're gonna work row nine and row nine is as 
row two. So we're going to purl all the way around. So we're going to be alternating a purl row and a knit row and then another purl row and another knit row. And the reason we're starting with the purl row for this, um, for this edge is because the last row that we worked, um, which was the last repeat of row eight, is to knit around. And so if we were to start with a knit row, then it would just create another row of stockinette stitch. And we want garter stitch here. So we're going to start with the purl row and then alternate back and forth. So I'm going to keep purling around until I get back to my marker. All right, so I'm back to my marker. I'm going to slip my marker to the right hand needle. And then we're going to work round 10, which is to repeat row one or to just knit all the way around. All right, so I'm back to the marker. I'll slip my marker and then I'm going to repeat rows nine and 10 again. Basically, I'm going to, um, since for row nine, we purled all the way around and for row 10, we knit all the way around. So I'm going to purl all the way around again and then knit all the way around again. All right, so I'm back around to the marker and that was my knit row. So we did a purl row, a knit row, a purl row, and another knit row. And now we're going to bind off because that is the end of our little garter stitch edging. So I'm going to remove the stitch marker now and we're going to bind off all the way around. So I'm gonna knit the first two stitches and pass the first one over the second one. And I'm doing this relatively loosely because we don't want to inhibit the stretch of our bind off edge. We want it to have enough stretch to it that it's not going to be like, you know, pulling on your neck or anything if you pull on it. So we're going to just bind off loosely all the way around. We're just going to keep knitting the next stitch, passing the first stitch over the second one. And as long as we do it loosely, the edge will still have some, a decent amount of give to it. All right, there's my last stitch to bind off. And now what we're going to do is we're going to cut the yarn. I've left about an eight inch tail and we're going to get a yarn needle and we're going to use it to kind of join the beginning and end of this round together. So what we're going to do is just pull on that last loop until the end of it comes out and then insert the end of that into the yarn needle and we're going to come over here to the first stitch we bound off and just insert the needle into that stitch. You can see there's a front strand and a back strand like so. And then we're going to come back down over here right to where our yarn was coming from before we just um, stitched through there. And we're going to go straight back down through the top of that stitch like so and that finishes off the edge and makes a completely seamless looking edge even though that was where we stopped. So now I'm going to pick up a little strand close to the edge and make a knot and then I can weave in this tail in a minute. So I'm going to take the yarn tail from the cast on and I'm going to thread it into my yarn needle and then down here we're going to just take a little stitch across to that first cast on stitch right here and that will help close up the little gap in the cast on so now i can also make a knot down here preferably on the back side and weave in this tail so once i weave in my tails then my cowl will be finished and then I'm going to go ahead and block it. If you don't know how to block um, your projects, I just did a video on that last week, so see the link in the description box if you want to check that out. So I'm gonna go ahead and weave in my ends and block my cowl, and blocking will help to open up the lace and kind of spread it out and make it look its best. And then the cowl will be finished. And this is a great project. Anytime you just need to use up a single skein of yarn, and make a quick and easy project that's not super hard to do. 
So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if you make this project in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, making sure you click the little bell next to the subscribe button to be notified of new videos. Thanks for watching.